he is a consummate artist. He, I, th I don't know if people realize how damn good he is. He, he could be the equal of Howard Pyle or N.C. Wyeth or any of the great illustrators. Even as a child of about six years old, five, six, and then on, I loved to draw faces and people and cartoons. And if I wasn't drawing, I was building model airplanes. And I was determined that I was either going to be an, an artist or an airplane pilot at one point. I went into the Marine Corps and uh, was in the service for two years. And then after the Marine Corps, then I went to art school at the uh, Chicago Academy of Fine Arts. After that two years, I went to the American Academy of Art for six months, taking anatomy and, and life drawing and uh, painting class. And, and then from there, I became an apprentice in an art studio. Well, Harold Munstock introduced me to Sunbloom, and Sunbloom told me to bring him my life drawings which I did, and on the strength of my life drawings, he hired me as an apprentice in his studio. He particularly, <laughs> he liked the way I, I drew hands and feet. I was very, very careful with, with the draftsmanship in, in feet and hands, and, uh, and certainly due in large part to the influence of my instructor. And so he liked that and, and, and took note of it, and so I became an apprentice in his studio. Before I came to New York, it was all advertising. And after I'd been in New York uh, for a few years and um, became established, or at least started to build some kind of a reputation, then I was able to get into the magazines. And I think Ladies' Home Journal was the first one that gave me a break. And then from there, it was McCall's and Good Housekeeping and Cosmopolitan. And I think that's another advantage in having been an illustrator because there has to be a, a great variety in, in the work that's done and the body of work. And, and you can't uh, repeat yourself. And uh, so that's been helpful, I think, to me uh, in my fine arts career. Producers and the art directors always wanted everything in, in the painting. I mean, everything in the movie had to go in the painting. So it was uh, sometimes a bit of a struggle. Well, the first movie that I did was Guns and Navarone with uh, Gregory Peck and David Niven and Anthony Quinn. I think that was about 1964. And fortunately, the movie was a big success, so that made me a hero. And of course, I had absolutely nothing to do with the quality of the movie, but after that, the, they just started snowballing, and it was one movie after another. And I remember seeing it as if it was yesterday, The Guns in Averone, when I saw his, uh, the poster for the movie. And I said, man, that is some kind of art. And my eyes just bugged out of my head. And of course, he did so many more beyond that. I did uh, Counterfeit Trader with William Holden, and for some reason I enjoyed working on that movie. There was a shining example of everything in the movie going on in the painting, but 
There was a scene in the film where these uh, people were being chased by, I think, some German motorcycles or something through this uh, European village, and all of the people got out on their bicycles and rode along the street to block these trucks so they couldn't catch these uh, people trying to escape. And so they wanted across the bottom of the painting a side view of all of these people riding bicycles. And I remember sitting up all one night working on those bicycles and painting all of those wheels and all of these figures oh. and spoke well fortunately you know they, they were moving so I I could you know fudge on that but uh, I just about went out of my mind Lawrence of Arabia I did two paintings for Cleopatra. I did the re-release of Gone with the Wind. I had to find a model, a voluptuous model, uh, for uh, Gone with the Wind and then use Vivian Lee's head in there. These days, I do a drawing for myself. It's a half size drawing. In other words, it's half the size that the original painting is going to be. And then I go from there and scale it up to full size and, and uh, transpose the drawing onto the canvas. I like to paint light on dark, so I always put a wash of color on the canvas, a middle tone, and let it dry, and then start the painting on those tones so I'm not confronted with a white canvas. I work all around the painting. I don't focus on one area and finish it. I try to keep everything moving and, and get the whole painting established. And I've, I figured out years ago that I basically do a painting three times. It's the initial lay-in, and sort of a, a halfway point, if you will, where things are carried further but not completed. And then I go back and finish the painting, finish one area after another and, and then complete it that way. She has that ability to tell a story so that you, you are there. His ideas are always totally original, things that nobody's done before, and, and it just amazes me what he comes up with. I've known Howard for 40 years, and I have no idea how he does it. <laughs> it just seems to come out of me, like the brownies come at night and, <laughs> and help him out or something. I think when someone buys a work of mine, be it an original or a print, that they have a sense of not only the appreciation of, of what they're buying, but they feel drawn into that work, into that picture, and they feel emotionally connected with it somehow, perhaps even if they don't realize it. But I've talked with so many people who, who say that they feel connected to the painting somehow. They feel that they're there. They, they feel emotionally moved by it, and that's what any art should do, be it music or literature or painting, it should move people. That's the purpose of art. <laughs>